uh, Congresswoman Johnson and the members of the committee. I, I thank you for the opportunity to speak to you today on the issues concerning the nation's human spaceflight program. Uh, I am a member of the National Academy of Engineers. Uh, I specifically chair the Aeronautics and Space Engineering Board of the National Research Council, which is part of the Academy. Uh, the National Research Council was created in 1967 to focus talents and energies of the engineering community on significant aerospace policies and programs. The ASCB uh, works in concert with the NRC Space Studies Board. We work hand in hand. And over the past decade, we have looked at various studies associated with programs related to uh, space exploration uh, and all of the activities that NASA is involved in. Uh, I also was a member of the 2004 President Bush Commission, Space Commission, that looked at the implementation of the United States, new United States at the time, space exploration policy. Uh, I was part of that activity, led by Pete Aldrich, the former Secretary of the Air Force. And we came up with some very strong recommendations that we think underpin the current space exploration program that NASA is currently embarked upon. I also had the honor in 2009 to be part of the Augustine Committee. Uh, Norm Augustine, the former CEO of Lockheed Martin, as you well know, uh, was asked by the administration and by the Congress uh, to look at the civil space program and human space program uh, for the United States. We were chartered specifically not to come up with recommendations, but to look at options on how we might conduct uh, space exploration for the United States. And then finally, I had the honor in 2009 of chairing an independent uh, National Academy study titled America's Future in Space, Aligning the Civil Space Program with National Needs. The formal task of that committee, uh, that commission rather, was to look at the rationale and goals for our civil space program for the United States. And we specifically came up with recommendations uh, to align our space program to the national needs of the United States. Hopefully during question and answer I will get a chance to elaborate on each one of those uh, previous studies. I uh, will go back and mention that uh, the Aeronautics and Space Engineering Board has not specifically addressed all of the questions that you are interested in in this particular hearing. However, we have done a lot of things, I think, that touch upon the key elements and key concerns and opportunities associated with going to Mars, associated with space exploration, and certainly associated with the Mars flyby opportunity. Uh, in 2012, specifically, the Aeronautics uh, and Space Engineering Board, the NASA Research County uh, Committee, excuse me, uh, and the um, National Academy itself completed reviewing a series of NASA space technology roadmaps. We provided NASA with what we consider to be a very comprehensive list of technologies that need to be addressed if there was going to be any chance of getting to Mars even in the, uh, the year 2030, 2020 uh, timeframe. Uh, we provided that to NASA. They embrace it, as I understand. And our recommendations for a technology roadmap are the underpinnings for the current technology programs that NASA is embarked upon. Uh, those technology roadmaps indicated that there are several high priority technologies that require further development in categories such as radiation mitigation uh, for human spaceflight, environmental control, life support systems, uh, space propulsion, et cetera. It was a very, very comprehensive activity conducted over a year and a half time frame. And again, it underpins most of the technology programs that NASA is currently embarked upon. Relative to the Mars flyby uh, task and that we are specifically looking at here, in my personal opinion, uh, the Inspiration Mars proposal uh, provides, I think, an exciting opportunity for our space exploration program and certainly for NASA. It certainly is uh, one that would provide vision. It addresses many of the concerns that each one of the studies I participated in uh, was concerned with, including technology and technology maturation. But in my opinion and based on my experience, uh, 35 and a half years uh, in the Air Force, mostly develop, uh, uh, developing space systems or high technology systems, it does have high risk associated with it. Uh, Scott Pace just described some of the things that need to be addressed, looking at costs, looking at risks, looking at technologies. But to me, it is something that needs to be addressed, and I think it fits in some respects with both the current space policy and certainly with the things that were addressed in the studies that I, uh, that I touched upon. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I will stop my remarks there. I have provided some specific written comments, and I look forward to your questions and the opportunity to, to talk about some of the previous studies in more detail in the Q&A. Thank you.